Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about theories of population for UGC NET. Today we will discuss about Malthusian theory of population, demographic transition theory of population and optimum population theory. So let's start it. First of all, we will see Malthusian theory of population. This theory mainly tells us the relation between growth rate of food supply and growth rate of population. This theory mainly tells us the relation between growth rate of food supply and growth rate of population. According to this theory, food supply increase at arithmetic rate, but population increase at geometric rate. That means population grow at very fast rate as compared to growth in food supply. In this diagram, you can see on x-axis we have time period and y-axis we have quantity. This OF line shows the growth rate in food supply and this OP curve shows growth rate in population. Here you can see food supply is growing at very constant rate at very slow rate, but population is growing at very fast rate. So we can see the growth rate in population is faster as compared to growth in food supply. So at E point you can see growth rate in food supply is equal to growth rate in population. It will be called crisis point because after E point you can see population growth is higher as compared to growth in food supply. An assumption of this theory are Food is necessary to survive, population grow at geometric rate, food supply grow at arithmetic rate and technological advancement is limited and higher income can lead to growth in population. If population is growing but we don't have food to eat, obviously it will lead to very complicated situation for our economy. So we need to control population. According to this uh, theory, we can control population by two ways, positive checks and preventive checks. Positive checks are natural circumstances that reduce the size of population. Positive checks are natural circumstances that reduce the size of population. For example, so many people are dying because of war, disease, famine, earthquake or flood. If people are dying, then obviously growth rate of population will decline. Second way to control population is preventive checks. Preventive checks are deliberate actions taken to limit the growth of population. Preventive checks are deliberate actions taken to limit the growth of population. For example, late marriages, adopting birth control methods or proper family planning. Now we will see criticism of this theory. This theory is based on European and American experiences that's why not applicable everywhere. And this theory do not include technological innovation. And this theory doesn't provide a proof which exactly show population is growing at very fast rate and food supply is growing at very slow rate. And this theory don't give any importance to industrial development. And this theory is very pessimistic because this theory don't talk about people potential, people ability for economic growth. Now we will see demographic transition theory of population. This theory mainly shows transition from high birth rate and high death to lower birth and lower death. This theory mainly shows transition from high birth and high death to lower birth and lower death. Or we can say that according to this theory, initially birth rate and death rate are very high because our economic growth is very low, we are mainly depend on agriculture sector. But as we are growing, becoming more industrialized, birth rate and death rate both start declining. Now with the help of this diagram, we will understand this theory. In this diagram on x-axis, we have time period and y-axis, we have birth rate and death rate. This BR curve represent birth rate and DR curve represent death rate. This theory mainly divided into three stages, first, second and third. During first stage, you can see birth rate and death rate both are very high. But why? Because initially our economic development is very low. We are mainly depend on agriculture sector. That's why people are giving birth to more children because they need more people to work in agriculture sector. Plus, 
death rate also very high because initially our economic development is very low we are mainly depend on agriculture sector there is lack of food there is lack of nutrition there is lack of medical facilities there is lack of knowledge about health care that's why during first stage death rate also very high during second stage you can see initially birth rate and death rate are very high but as we are growing we are becoming more industrialized birth rate and death rate both start declining death rate declining very fast as compared to birth rate that's why overall birth rate is high as compared to death rate and difference between birth rate and death rate will be called natural growth in population but why death rate is declining very fast as compared to birth rate because now we are growing that's why we are getting proper food nutrition health care facilities and our knowledge also increasing about health care and during the third stage you can see birth rate and death rate both become very slow down means both are declining so here we can say that this theory mainly talk about transition from high birth and high death to low birth and low death rate now we'll see criticism of this theory this theory talks about three stages but sequence of stages is not same in every country this theory not applicable everywhere because it is based on experiences of england this theory don't explain migration migration is primary factor in population growth this theory don't explain time to transition means this theory don't explain how much time we take to move from one stage to other stage this theory don't consider social factor for example women education as we know women education play very important role to control birth rate now we will see optimum theory of population this theory talk about desirable size of population where we are getting maximum return from our existing resources and our per capita income also very high this theory mainly talk about desirable size of population where our existing resources are giving maximum return and our per capita income is also very high this theory talk about underpopulated overpopulated and optimum populated in case of underpopulated population is less than resources that means resources are not properly utilized our per capita income will remain low in case of overpopulated resources are less than population means uh, our resources are over utilized uh, our per capita income will remain low in case of optimum population population growth is equal to our existing resources that means resources are equal to population in this case uh, we are getting maximum return from our existing resources so this will be called desirable size of our population in such case our uh, per capita income also remain high assumption of this theory are natural resources are given technology constant capital stock constant habit and tastes of people are constant and ratio of working population is also constant now we'll see diagram of this theory on x axis we have a population and y axis we have output per capita on population is showing optimum level of population or we can say on population is showing most desirable size of our population here our resources are properly utilized that's why our per capita income will remain high before on you can see we have underpopulated area here uh, our resources are more but population growth is less that's why resources are not properly utilized our per capita income will remain low after on you can see uh, resources are less than population that's why resources are over utilized and per capita income will remain low so we can say the on population will be called optimum size of population or we can say on population will be called most desirable size of our population now we'll see criticism of this theory no any proof of optimum level and impossible to measure optimum level and this is not correct measurement of per capita income and this theory is short time period and static theory so this is all about uh, theories of population i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care